So for our first topic, Xi Jinping took his first trip to Europe since 2019. He visited France, Serbia, and Hungary, and his visits to each country coincided with the 60th anniversary of China's relations with France and the 75th anniversary of its official ties with Hungary. What was the purpose of this trip and why now? China has been selling the world the falsehood that the predominant paramount problem of the world is China versus uh, United States. United States is a hegemon. China is a victim. China is going to lead the, uh, all the nations of oppressed and uh, victimized by the United States uh, to salvation. So that's the idea. Uh, mm-hmm. So to do this, uh, that China must uh, uh, prolong this, uh, this myth and uh, is most afraid of uh, one thing, that is uh, unity of the, the world. In other, in other words, the reality is not just China versus the United States. It's China versus the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. So the rest of the world is, consists of a, a lot of uh, alliances, and almost all of them has some kind of elements to prevent China from dominating the world. Therefore, China's ultimate uh, tactic for decades has always been unity busting. Whenever mm-hmm. there is a uh, coalition of people uh, associating of free peoples and free nations, and China is going to uh, break that unity and one by one by focusing on the individual nations, but not on the union and alliance at all. So, for example, China has spent a major portion of its diplomatic and political assets to uh, bust unity of ASEAN, the Southeast Asian Alliance of Nations, Association of Nations, and the transatlantic, transatlantic alliance between U.S. and the EU countries. And uh, no, particularly recently, you can see the U.S. led uh, bilateral mutual defense alliance uh, in Asia and Southeast Asia. That is the U.S., Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines. Xi Jinping's trip to Europe for, follows the same kind of tactic. So therefore, its primary goal is to defeat EU unity. And because EU has been relatively strong on China uh, recently. Yeah, and as you say, I mean, tensions between the EU and China are higher than she would like, particularly on the issue of trade. Why these three countries to single out? Before I answer that question directly, uh, EU is uh, being strong on China, not just on trade, mm. uh, mostly political. Uh, EU's definition of the EU-China relationship is one of systemic rivalry. I, my per- I myself uh, personally asked the EU's uh, uh, China chief, what does the systemic rivalry mean? What does the system mean? Is the, is the, the coverage, the area of uh, engagement involved, or is it political, ideological? And he said, <laughs> without the blink of the eye, he said, it is ideological and political uh, mm. rivalry. So uh, that is a very, very good definition. EU's chief, Joseph uh, Barrao, has said many times, even though he's been weak on China at some point, but on, on issues of regional security, for example, Taiwan, he has written articles directly urging EU countries to send the warship to patrol uh, Taiwan Strait. And this is kind of very strong. I and mean, of course, EU's uh, uh, economic and trade self-protection has been growing, particularly against China's uh, sudden surge of exports to European countries, the electric vehicles. So mm-hmm. that's why uh, EU's unity has been relatively strong. So Xi Jinping didn't like that. To answer your question, why these three countries, France, Serbia, and Hungary? Because Xi Jinping wants to find a crack within the EU system to derail EU's collective power and influence. And CCP wants to find the crankiest, the most opportunistic EU national leader and uh, to do this job, and that's Emmanuel Macron of France. Mm-hmm. He wants to have a strategic autonomy of NATO from the United States. He has said that NATO is brain dead, yet uh, he follow in Beijing's queue and absolutely oppose NATO's expansion to Asia particularly to reject and resolutely oppose Japan's request to have a NATO office in Tokyo. And he he was the first EU uh, national leader to allow Chinese police to station in Paris, harming France's sovereignty and to China's uh, uh, greatest delight. Why Serbia? Well, uh, Serbia is a a very um, uh, interesting uh, case because Serbia carries a direct anti-West uh, message because uh, uh, of the Co- uh, Kosovo War. And you mentioned about several anniversaries, but there's one anniversary he didn't mention. That is the 25th anniversary of the NATO's accidental bombing of Chinese embassy in Belgrade mm. during the Kosovo War. Uh, that was a turning point. China used that incident uh, to find an enormous 
anti-U.S. anti-American national campaign. You mentioned uh, the Bel- Belgrade the embassy bombing in China, and uh, you're going to have a lot of people riled up. Uh, that's Chinese probably uh, uh, the impact of Chinese uh, propaganda. And uh, Xi Jinping even penned an editorial during his visit to uh, to Serbia, blaming the United States as the source of instability globally, and China is a savior. And uh, now keep in mind that Serbia. Uh, is China's stand. During the Kosovo War, China was the, the biggest champion of uh, uh, Serbia, uh, Milosevic's uh, uh, cause. When Serbia's embassy in the United States was closed, China stepped in and uh, to assume all the consular affairs uh, for uh, Serbia in Washington, D.C. During the Kosovo War, the NATO bombing of Serbia and Montenegro, Virtually every foreign embassy evacuated, except, except the Chinese. Their embassy staff actually increased. They sent a lot of people over there, and many of them were intelligence people to collect uh, the NATO in, uh, military intelligence during this conflict. And also, there's another thing that why China is so key, so keen on Serbia. Uh, Xi Jinping, this is one of the reasons why Xi Jinping wants to uh, visit Serbia, because Serbia is the center of what used to be Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia basically is a combination of many ethnic groups, ethnic countries uh, together, and every single one of them wants independence. The NATO's war on, on Serbia carrying a very strong message that China is mes- uh, most afraid of. That is uh, the message of national self-determination. Def- uh, Kosovo, China re- related as uh, uh, related, is related to Tibet and uh, Xinjiang. So China is afraid that uh, Kosovo may set up an example for Tibetans and, and the Uyghurs uh, who wants independence uh, anyway. So uh, uh, that's why in this, uh, this bond between Serbia and China has been very, very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a huge propaganda topic uh, for domestic anti-American hysteria. Xi Jinping said very, very pleasantly in his uh, editorial published in Bel- uh, in. Um, in uh, uh, Belgrade uh, during his visit, that uh, the relationship between Serbia and uh, China was created by uh, blood shed together. <laughs> That's the language that China usually reserves for countries like North Korea. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, that's the political thing. Uh, China also invested very heavily um, in the Belt and Road Initiative in Serbia. The, one of the biggest one is uh, uh, the uh, Belgrade uh, Budapest uh, Railway, uh, which is uh, very uh, uh, heavily invested, built by Chinese engineers, which brings us to the next uh, uh, country that Xi Jinping visited, Hungary, whose capital is, of course, Budapest. Hungary is very interesting because Hungary, uh, uh, first of all, is uh, perhaps the most intrinsically related to China's recent history. You recall, uh, many of the Chinese political um, campaigns had a lot to do with what's going on in the Soviet bloc. Last week, mm-hmm. we talked about the impact of the Soviet system on China. One of the most landmark events was the 1956 Hungarian uprising. That is, Hungarian people rose up and to oppose uh, Soviet domination, which was cracked down by the Soviet tanks and machine guns in uh, 1956. China got the kill from that. Uh, and uh, that was the source um, of uh, the 1957 anti-rightist movement Mao Zedong launched. And one of the uh, uh, the, the guys I knew very well, his name, he's passed away, Harry Wu, who was then uh, a college student in China. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, openly opposed to China's uh, support for the Soviet crackdown on the Hungarian uprising in 1956. For that, he was sentenced eventually to a life term in prison. <laughs> Uh, this guy basically uh, uh, was released earlier, came to the United States in the 1980s, and he became a staunch anti-CCP uh, human rights advocate. And, and so, uh, but also during China's uh, opening up and uh, um, reform movement under Deng Xiaoping, it was Hungary that gave China the inspiration to open up uh, its, uh, its rigid command economy and create something called a special economic zone because Hungary mm-hmm. itself, under Soviet uh, direction uh, became the Soviet 
a block, so a special economic zone in the late、uh, 1970s and early 80s. So this is a, a very impactful. Now Hungary right now serve a particularly different purpose for China. That is, Hungary has been used by China as a Trojan horse for EU because、uh, EU has this uh, uh, very unfortunate requirement on major economic and political system. That is, EU. Requires unanimity. This unanimity rule、mm-hmm. uh, uh, is hurting、um, EU and China. See this opportunity and use Hungary to break the un- EU's power.、Uh, Hungary has been very pro-China and、uh, Hungary has been very pro-Russia, particularly on war in Ukraine. The Hungarian leader right now, Viktor Orbán, thought he was fighting、um, a, a woke war against the, the woke West, but in fact, he was actually. Fighting the war against the Western values and the Western alliance by siding with Russia, siding with China. Now, Hungary has、uh, allowed major Chinese companies, Huawei, ZTE, and the battery maker、uh, Cattle in particular, to set up factories,、um, bypassing many、uh, regulatory、uh, barriers, and to set up a lot of plants in Hungary. I was there last year. I saw in my own eyes that、uh, how penetrated Hungary has been by China. So that's why Xi Jinping want to go to go to、uh, Budapest and to、uh, hobnob with the、uh, the Hungarian、uh, government and to create a very strong stronghold for China as the base、uh, from which to penetrate the EU market、uh, with these surging EV uh, products. Uh, And、uh, that's why EU has been very, very alerted、uh, to this Chinese、mm-hmm. move. That's a great lay of the land, and I want to talk about you know go through each country one by one in terms of how this trip went. So you mentioned France has recently and historically sought strategic autonomy.、Um, they've been a little bit friendlier to China on that front. Did this trip go as expected for Xi Jinping? How, how did how did th- how did he make out with、uh, Macron? Uh, these three countries are very different in 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 terms of、uh, impact、mm-hmm. and、uh, <clears throat> impact of power. France obviously was a, a very big one.、Uh, France is、uh, the at the heart of、uh, of EU and、uh, is big economy. And、uh, France traditionally has been the leader of a lot of uh, 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 political moves.、Uh, most importantly, France wants to be the、uh, the leader of uh, EU uh, since the United States. Mm-hmm. It did not go very well as Xi Jinping would, would like、uh, in France because Macron obviously、uh, is afraid of a backlash from the EU,、uh, and also he's afraid of、uh, isolation and estrangement from the EU. So during his visit,、uh, Macron actually seated his leading role as a host. He led the leader of the EU, the lady、uh, Ursula von der Leyen, von der Leyen, to、uh, take the lead. So it was supposed to be a, a bilateral meeting. It turned out to be a, a trilateral meeting between、mm-hmm. Xi Jinping and the EU leader、uh, Ursula and also Macron. So uh, 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 the EU uh, president, the、uh, chairman, and she played very tough, uh, tough uh, role, and she was、uh, very straightforward to Xi Jinping and、uh, Macron, basically almost sitting on the back bench. So that's why. Uh, I don't know whether it's a, this a design,、uh, this is by design or is by default. You know,、uh, that's how it went out.、Um, I don't think there is some kind of political message yet. She didn't even successfully send it to、uh, EU、uh, during this particular visit to France. To Serbia, obviously, Serbia needed、uh, China more.、Mm-hmm. I think China is looking for a new Albania, if you will. If you know Cold War history. China has no friend in Europe, and uh, so he, uh, uh, the only country that was friendly to China,、uh, was the socialist uh, uh, communist country of Albania, who openly rebel against the、uh, Soviet Union. China like that, and most importantly, Albania, of course, is a parochial country, and it, Albania's main ideological rivalry was Yugoslavia.、Mm. So up and down, up and down, China chose Albania.、Uh, remember when Yugoslavia was good comrade. Albania was the revision is a bad guy. When、um, after Stalin died,、uh, Khrushchev resumed good relationship with the Yugoslavia, and the China, of course,、uh, split with the、uh, the Soviet、uh, under Khrushchev. So Albania all of a sudden became 
uh, a friend and good comrades, and Yugoslavia became a bad uh, revisionist uh, uh, country. So this is all very, very utilitarian. You know, within the communist ideological camp, this kind of infight has been very deadly. Very much like what China is doing right now to Serbia, China invested heavily to Albania. And to the tune of one point two billion dollars, those days billion a billion uh, is a lot of money. Yeah. So China was a very poor country. Mill tens of millions of people were starving. China put a lot of money uh, to Albania. Virtually, the country was basically bankrupted by China. That is what China is doing. It, by bribery, by um, ideological alliance, China wants to uh, have Serbia as uh, uh, the new Albania in southeastern Europe. Eventually, to uh, to entire Europe, Western Europe, I don't think Serbia is a very popular country in Europe. Serbia mm-hmm. still uh, harbors a lot of uh, resentment against uh, the EU, against uh, Western Europe. So this is not a very good time for Xi Jinping to play politics because China itself has been increasingly unpopular worldwide, particularly in Europe. The embassy bombing is just silly. I mean, there is a uh, uh, no political capital to be gained. On this, that was 25 years ago, and the United States uh, explained to China what happened. By the way, why is that China uh, uh, sends so many people? It has such a strong political, diplomatic, and military presence in the middle of the war when everybody mm-hmm. is is evacuated. So this is not entirely the United States to blame. Hungary, uh, obviously, is uh, a, a very uh, mixed baggage. I think uh, Viktor Orbán continued to be stubborn, and I think there. Are, the the image is very telling between the the warm greetings uh, of these two leaders. Uh, however, I think uh, precisely because of China's enhanced massive investment in Hungary, uh, in terms of uh, uh, building up the cheap electric vehicles and the batteries, I think that uh, really caused a much heightened alert within EU. You will see very strong discussion within Brussels uh, leadership circle about the uh, Hungary's role in um, the U.S.-China and the EU-China rivalries. We have a little bit of time left. I want to move to another topic. That is a, an international investigation by The Guardian, Dayzeit, and Le Monde have uncovered a vast network of fake e-commerce shops uh, which falsely claim to sell designer goods and 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 uh, operate out of China, which have stolen the credit card information of over 800,000 people in Europe and America. Miles, can you expand a little bit on, on what happened here and, and how common is activity like this in China? China's economic development in the last uh, several decades obviously had a lot to do with the diligence and hardworking Chinese workers and uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, non-state uh, uh, companies because they were linked to the global uh, economic free trade system. That is for sure. On the other hand, the very system under the Chinese uh, CCP encouraged and created economic and political culture, encouraged stealing of other people's intellectual uh, properties. You might even say People's Republic of China literally is a People's Republic of knockoffs. And there's so many Chinese uh, uh, brand names right now uh, are exactly copying of some other uh, international brands. You name it. I mean, <laughs> it's from this, uh, sneakers to the computer system to the electronic uh, major uh, selling items uh, to uh, even its uh, electric vehicle cars. Uh, Xiaomi, as we discussed earlier, had the exact copy of a uh, uh, German car automobile maker uh, Porsche's uh, uh, design. So it's been getting away with uh, with a lot of things, a lot of fakery and bogus uh, merchandises. In this case, we used to focus on hacking of countries like uh, Russia, Iran, mm. right? But the Chinese hacking is been much, much uh, uh, more alarming because uh, China is a country of the strongest, the most efficient electronic surveillance. They can catch you very easily. That's run by the state uh, agencies. Yet, the hacking criminals from China were somehow allowed to hack the world economic system en masse by the millions of, uh, of cases, uh, in this case, the Guardian, as we reported, uh, more than 800,000 people in Europe and the United States appear to have been duped into sharing card 
derail, uh, details and other sensitive personal data with a vast network of fake online designer shops and apparently operated from China. That's the, the quote from the first par paragraph of the Guardian report. So you see, without the um, collusion and uh, almost uh, like a, a, a oblique help by the Chinese mm -hmm. state operator, this kind of uh, uh, hacking, intellectual st property stealing on a massive scale um, would become very, very impossible. So that's why I say this is a uh, you know, sense about China is not the necessarily the act of individual hooligans. It normally has a state factor behind. So I just want to push on that a little bit further. I mean, you make some excellent points that China has in many ways encouraged a culture of economic, uh, maybe indecency, let's say, with intellectual property theft. And that, you know, it's very suspicious that such a, a powerful security state and surveillance state would not be able to catch this. So there seems to be some negligence involved. Would you say that it goes so far as to say uh, the state is actually coordinating this, or is it simply something that they're sort of providing the grounds for and they're happy to ignore? The state normally stay behind and to carry out uh, uh, its uh, state policies. Uh, very clearly, I must give them credit for that, for dubious reason. For example, China literally hasn't banned all these foreign social media outlets to operate in China, for example, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google, et cetera, et cetera. They never have the ban on it. They just created a condition for those foreign uh, media outlets to operate in China. Uh, impossible. You have to give up your, uh, your trade secret. You must uh, really store your uh, consumer data inside China. You must comply with the Chinese Intelligence and the Public Security Bureau. 100%, otherwise you will not be allowed. That's like a surrender. So that's why those companies were not allowed to, to operate. So if you say, hey, this is a ban, turns out oh, we never ban it. So it's very clever over there. It's, in fact, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Chinese economy is in shambles recently, except in two areas. One of them is the EV, the electric vehicles. Another one is e-commerce. E-commerce in China has been enormous. Uh, the, uh, the Chinese government encouraged the e-commerce uh, by giving them political coverage for example, China's state actor has been trying to hack in into uh, the largest e-commerce in the United States, uh, Amazon.com, hack the corporate data because that's where the crown jewel of Amazon is. That is uh, uh, the consumer information, including some of the highly sensitive uh, cloud storage information. Mm -hmm. So that has not been totally successful. So China's new strategy is to create a, a company e-commerce company to replace Amazon.com. And they chose two. One is a Temu, another one is Xin. These two Chinese companies have been given a lot of green lights by the Chinese government to operate uh, at the, in the United States with the enormous state subsidies, right? Temu, you can see, and Xin in the US e-commerce is selling, are selling exactly the same items in many cases uh, the Amazon uh, uh, are selling but at the a fraction of the price, and they use a very uh, uh, salacious advertisement to uh, attract customers to buy stuff from them. Eventually, they use kind of a, this kind of development model to provide subsidy, provide political coverage for those companies to operate in the free market system and eventually to beat and destroy each of the competitors in the free market system one by one. So this has been pattern has been going on for a long time. And this is why this has a, a serious national security concern because ultimately the future of e-commerce, the future of the international e economy to a large degree uh, depended on the uh, control of the new platform of commerce, of security and of war even. And that is uh, uh, such as artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is data driven without mm. collection of a massive amount of data globally, uh, artificial intelligence won't work. Uh, that's why the stake is extremely high and we have to be very, very careful about this. 